Hi, this is Sandy Genovese and welcome to the Scrapbook Showgram. Today I wanted to share with you the Christmas card that I'm making and um, because I skipped and I didn't make one last year I decided to get really extravagant this year. Um, so I made something that's really involved but I'm going to show you a way that you can simplify and do a simpler version if you're doing a lot and you don't want that extravagant of a display. Here is what the cover looks like and it looks pretty boring. However, that's because when you open it, let me op move things and you can see, when you open it and you look at all the things inside, what you're intended to do is to pull it around so that, as you can see, the front will line up with the back and this heart-shaped clip that was on the cover is meant to actually, I'll turn this so maybe you can see it, is meant to hold the whole display open so that now you have this wonderful three-dimensional display that is really a fun thing to put out and trust me it's something that you'll save and you'll put out every holiday so you're even being, you're, you know, you're going green <laughs> to celebrate the red and green holiday. Now let me move this enough out of the way so I can kind of show you how to start. You're going to want to start, if you make it the same dimension as I am, with the envelope. The envelope that will fit something this thick um, is an A7 envelope. So that is what I used. Now in order to start the card, I started with white cardstock and mine is 6 inches by 8 and a half inches. And what you want to do is you want to fold it first in half and then you're going to fold it in half again and this time I'm folding the opposite direction each end folding it in so that what I end up with are these accordion pleats. Now I want to position it so that the pleat has the mountain pleat in the middle and then I took and this the shape and the size of the window is up to you. I used a rectangle and mine was two and a fourth by two and three fourths and I folded it in half and then just lay it down right. I'm going to turn it so the top is facing you. I put it so that it just overlaps this mountain fold. Then you're going to take a pencil. You only need to trace around half of it. So I'm going to just leave it closed and then you're going to trace with your pencil right around and then you end up with the mark. Now I happen to prefer having the window so that it's just a little bit with a smaller opening, a smaller section at the top and a chunkier section at the bottom, you may want to put it right smack dab in the middle. That's totally up to you. Once you've marked it with the pencil, you want to leave it folded closed and then you're going to go ahead and cut out this window. And because they're straight lines, this is a really quick and easy thing to do. If you have a paper trimmer, you can run it over to the paper trimmer and you can do it on the trimmer as well. But in all honesty, the time it takes to get up and walk over there, it may just be faster to go ahead and do it with scissors because the straight lines are, are quick and easy. So this is going to give you the window opening. At this point, if there's any place where you've got a pencil line showing, it's easiest to do it now before you have any dangling elements. So at this point, now I'm going to talk about decorating. And even though I'm going to dangle an element in the middle, I think it's easiest to decorate all around it first before you have that dangling thing that wants to get in your way. So I'm going to take and I will bring, the first thing I did was I cut strips of red and the width of these strips are one and a half inches. And I'm going to position it so it's down you know, I don't even know how much to tell you. I just am sort of eyeballing when it's down a little fraction. I don't know, maybe between an eighth and a quarter of an inch from the top cut there. I'm going to do the same thing, the same red paper in the same dimensions. I'm going to place this one on the other side so that it's also comes down, you know, about the same distance from the top. If you're doing a lot of these, you could make some sort of a guide that you put either here or here and that way you just know every time to butt it right up against there. Once you have those down, then I wanted to add just a little bit more um, flavor. So I've cut these quarter inch green pattern paper strips. If you have to put adhesive on back of something really thin like this, if you haven't seen me do this before, Cut yourself a piece of vellum, and I have it. It's pretty messy because it's it's been here for um, probably a year, but it, it's going to last you a long time. I'm going to go ahead. If I place my strip onto the vellum, 
any of the excess of the adhesive, it will not go onto the vellum because the vellum doesn't want to accept the adhesive, which means you're not going to have to worry about a lot of messy cleanup later. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to position this so that it's, you know, and I'm just sort of eyeballing when I like where it looks. That's the whole beauty of making it yourself is you get to decide. You know, if you think, gee, I think I would have liked that better if that were yellow, or I would have liked that better if that was closer to the top. That's the whole fun of making it yourself is you get to make all of those decisions. If you end up with any excess, you know, um, I can see a little bit of excess. You can trim the little bits off of the red and green. So at this point, you have this part. Now let's talk about the dangling part. And what that is, is two images, whether they're die cuts or stickers, and they're sandwiched um, together where you place thread in the middle. So in this case, I'm doing, as the, um, the embellishment, I'm doing an ornament. But let me bring over here and show you all of the choices that I have in this card. And of course, you may come up with other choices. If you look here, you can see this one was a tree that was stickers. Um, and you just need the mirror image stickers because you're gonna align them with the thread sandwiched in the middle. Here, this was a die cut of a star. Here, this is also the ornaments, a die cut. And then I just repeated the star and the tree. So, but you could do a jingle bell. I mean, you could do a wreath, you could do a snowman. I mean, who knows what other fun things you might decide you want to put to hang in the windows of your display. Once you've decided, then you're going to cut them and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place adhesive and I really only need to put most of the adhesive on one of these. And then I'm going to take a piece of thread and I'm going to position it, and I know the thread's white, so it may not show too much, but I'll get my fingers out of the way in a minute, so hopefully you can see. What I've got there is, I've got the ornament, and I've got the thread going right through that opening. I'm going to take the matching shape and place it, line it up, and then go ahead and press down once it's in position and they're aligned. So I now have a dangling element. I still have this thread in the middle, which allows me to add something else in there. And I could add, let me bring it up and I'll show you the choices. I have sticker hearts in a, in a multitude of sizes. I think I'll go ahead and I'll use the larger, but in all likelihood for my card, I may not even have enough of one size. Some of my cards might have larger hearts, some might have smaller hearts. I think it's easiest to place the bottom one first and I'm going to just line it up with the thread and then use my tweezers to kind of make the thread stick to that heart. And then I'll take, if you have um, mirror image stickers, they work, but if the sticker is symmetrical like a heart, you don't have to worry. They're gonna align no matter, you know, the, it doesn't if it's a matching shape, mirror image or not. So when it lines up like so, I've now got the heart in the middle. So I now have this dangling ornament and it's time to attach it to the card. What I usually do is place it so that it's going to hang in this middle opening. So I'm going to take a piece of tape and I'm going to go ahead and position the tape down close to the window itself. And this is just a, just ordinary scotch tape. I'm going to go back now I find it easiest to trim off my excess thread after I've already used it to hang. So at this point, if I turn it over, you can see I've really created one entire segment of the card itself. I'm going to go back and refold now on those fold lines because the red and the green paper didn't have folds in them just yet. So I've now refolded. If you want to make a simple version. The next step is going to be to add the red that goes behind. The red is the exact same dimensions as the white. It's six by eight and a half. It's just that there's no um, accordion folding and there's no window. In this example, all you need to do is just fold what's the back in half. So you fold it and you get that nice seam and then it's time to attach the what would be the front to what would be the back. And it's only attached on the first quarter and the last quarter of this card. So I'm going to place adhesive on the first quarter and 
I'll go ahead and I'll do this this in this position so hopefully you can see that I'm just because it's the same dimensions as the white it's going to line right up and then go ahead and put pressure so it will stick and then I'll go back at this point and now I'll add adhesive to this final quarter of the card the back section and I'll try to turn this once again so you can see and I'm going to go ahead and line this up also probably you could just close the card and it would align I'll go ahead and put my pressure so that it sticks down nicely and at this point you have a really kind of fun card with a dangling element if you're going to make a lot of cards at this point if you want to you can go back decorate the cover and this can be your card if you don't want to go the whole nine yards for the big extravagant display if you want to make the one that's um, it's based on a five-pointed star card then let me show you what you would do next you would go ahead and repeat this four more times because you need five of these and you can place different shapes in the middle or you can use all the same shape what you need to do at this point is you just need to position them I, I think I have it positioned so this one sits in the middle so what you've got then are all these layers and all you need to do to connect them is just put adhesive on the back of one and stick it to the front of the next one and then put adhesive on the back of that one and stick it to the next one you just continue that until you have adhesive on all of them and I'll move these out of the way so that you can see that you end up then with this and then the final you know element is the cover but remember because it's not going to show once it gets pulled all the way around like this you don't want to add too much thickness and make it difficult to clip and it's really not going to show longer than for the person to open the card up so what I did was all I did was I just took and I printed on the computer my greeting and then placed it on the the front cover and then added one more of the star die cuts that were the same ones that I used inside this is actually the mirror image one so it looks like this might be this one if I want it to line up no I guess it was that first one whichever design whichever shape um, whichever position you want and then the final thing these heart clips initially I got them at Staples but it turns out I didn't have enough of them so I went online and I found several places we'll put links to them online if you want to purchase the heart clips but basically it could just be a regular red or a green clip that you get at the office supply store like Staples they carry them I find them all year round in multiple colors and all you want to do I did a test I went around to a couple of people here whose offices are next to my studio and I said I put this into the envelope and I handed it to them and I said this is going to be your Christmas card show me what you would do with it because I wanted to find out whether I needed to include instructions and tell people to bring the front cover around in order to touch the back cover I gave it to four different people in four different offices male and female nobody had trouble and really within like 30 seconds they kind of each one opened it up accordion sort of like this and then right away their inclination was to pull it around like this so maybe the fact that there's a clip there I'm not sure but it turns out that I'm deciding I'm not going to I'm not going to put in directions I'm going to let whoever I send my cards to figure out that final last step you know whether you make the simple card or the more extravagant display you are sure to love this Christmas project Remember, I love hearing your comments. Be sure to share us with your scrapbooking friends. Don't forget to sign up for these free weekly videos. And if you want access to all the past episodes or you want to be able to download the project sheet, then you might want to consider joining the Gold Club. Bye for now and have a happy holiday.